1994 Lincoln Town Car with a 4.6 liter engine. What was the VIN code? W. VIN W was the, is the VIN code. Customer complaint is uh, check engine light, no drivability problems, and we're gonna go to the scanner next and see what we got. Okay, going to the trouble codes menu. And as you can see on this menu, on this older Ford, that there is no review codes listed here. That what you have to do to get codes out of this Ford is you have to run what's called a key on engine off self test. And of course this is unique to Fords. But before I can retrieve trouble codes from this vehicle, I have to run this key on engine off self test. No reason to run the key on engine run self test when you're just acquiring memory codes. There is codes that are stored in this vehicle, but to get them, I have to run the key on engine off self test. You'll notice after I run this test that there's going to be a box that's going to show up here that says review code. So what this test does is it is kind of self-explanatory. It is a self test. And what the computer's doing right now is it's turning certain solenoids on and off. It's looking at inputs and outputs. It's looking for opens and shorts. And <clears throat> our list just showed up. Let me back out for a second and show you what I was talking about. Right there, now we have review codes. Now that I've ran this, the key on engine off self test. So now we can review the codes. And there they are. And what it tells you is um, key on engine off codes fixed first, obviously, because that means they're hard faults. It means those are the ones you want to fix right now. And you see we have a uh, 111, which is system pass, which is there are no hard faults right now. Our memory codes, these are the codes that are setting the check engine light for the customer, are the 332 EGR valve and the 634 manual lever position out of range. Now what we don't know right now is which one of these two, well I know the EGR valve one will set a trouble code, sorry, I know the EGR valve one will set the check engine light, I'm not 100% sure that that manual lever position sensor, which is simply the transmission range sensor on a Ford, I'm not sure that one will set the light, I'm not worried about that right now for this video, what I want to show is the EGR valve system test. and. Uh, I've showed this before on other Fords. I showed the complete process of energizing the solenoid and watching the DPFE voltage. And, and I just want to show a little bit different method because this is one I use and it's a little bit faster um, and it's a little bit more to the point. So next thing I want to do is I want to look at this um, DPFE sensor. Now this is kind of a generic code that, um, see in parentheses it says EVP, PFE, DPFE. Those are the different sensors that Ford has used over the years. Older Fords had a position sensor that sat on top of the valve and they called them EGR valve position sensors. So that would be your EVP. This same trouble code would set for that sensor. Um, and then the, the next upgrade was a PFE and that was pressure feedback. That was a single hose pressure sensor. And they got rid of the EVP, replaced it with a pressure sensor to measure flow. And then the, the later one is the DPFE, and that's got two ports, two pressure hoses, and it's called a delta pressure feedback, also called a differential pressure feedback, so there's two hoses. But in any case, a little history on Fords, and what we're going after on this car is the DPFE signal voltage. I want to look at that first. I'm going to go back. Oh, real, one other thing real quick. Being that there is no hard faults right now. What that means is the computer is okay with whatever the DPFE voltage is right now with the key on engine off. So whatever our number is, uh, the computer is okay with it. So we'll go back, go back, we'll go to our data display. And we're looking for our DPFE voltage. Now some of these older Fords didn't give you data streams so you had to do manual testing so if you have a, a vehicle with the same code and you don't have data stream or you don't have a scanner that will give it to you, you can manually uh, monitor the DPFE sensor with a voltmeter. You can check out my other video on Ford EGR flow testing. I'm showing how to do that. I'm not going to do that in this one. The one we're going to focus on is this DPFE voltage right here and you can see that we're at 0.4 of a volt and that's with the EGR valve closed, this is with the key on engine off, the car is not running. Um, and generally what I look for on these DPFEs is I want to see them under a volt with no flow. And with the EGR flow, 
when the valve turns on and opens up, you're going to see uh, a number that you want to see generally go over 4 volts for full EGR flow. So its range is 0 to 5 with a half a volt to 4.5 volt range. Um, ignore these spikes on the screen. This is a self-updating min-max scale and this is only 100 millivolt difference. So it's 0 0.44, 0 0.45. That scale will change when this sensor changes. So what we want to do next is start the car and we want to force this EGR valve to open and we're going to do a couple things with this test. We want to hear the idle get real rough and just about stall the engine. And number two, I want to see my DPFE voltage rise. So I'm going to show you a very quick way that we can do that on these forts. Alright, just showing you some of the components now so you know where we're working. Uh, this is our EVR solenoid right here, that's EGR valve regulator. That's going to control the amount of vacuum to the EGR valve. The EGR valve sits, difficult to show you this one, but it sits down underneath where I'm pointing. Under here is your EGR valve. And then the DPFE sensor, it, it lives in a very difficult spot too. And here's the connector for it. So it's kind of in the back and I really can't show you the sensor very well, but that's your DPFE sensor. Alright, so I've shown in a previous video how to energize this EVR solenoid right here using a test light. And we're not going to do it that way on this one. I want to show you another method. And uh, what I want to show you, if you pop the, the um, air vent off the top of this, now I loosened it previously, sometimes they're difficult to take off. Take the cap off the top of the EVR, and at the top of the EVR, you see your air bleed right here. If you put your finger over the air bleed, that forces vacuum to the EGR valve. So it's a very quick way, without a hand vacuum pump, to force the EGR valve to open and listen for your RPM drop to check your passages to see if they're plugged. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start the car, run it, put my finger over the port, and we're going to watch the DPFE voltage at the same time. got the engine running and we're looking at our DPFE voltage of 0.46 over here and you can see in the far left corner of the screen I got the cap off of the EVR I'm just going to reach over and I'm going to put my finger over the EVR solenoid vent watch the screen no change whatsoever change whatsoever in DPFE voltage and no change whatsoever in my RPM and so at this point I'm not worried about my DPFE sensor I'm worried about a plugged up passage or a broken vacuum hose or a bad EGR valve so the next step is going to be see if our vacuum supply is actually getting to the EGR valve and I'm going to show you that next okay so what I've done at this point is I've removed the vacuum hose from the EGR valve. Uh, I've left the vacuum hose connected to the EVR solenoid. And what I'm showing is, in this step, is we're making sure that the EVR solenoid is in fact supplying vacuum to the EGR valve. So I'm gonna do the same test, watch the vacuum gauge. Finger over the bleed, got about 19 inches of vacuum. Take my finger off. So you can see that that is a very effective test for forcing the EGR valve to open and it's very quick. So what that tells me is my supply vacuum to my EVR is good and my supply vacuum from the EVR to the EGR is good and now our focus goes to the EGR valve or plugged up passages. Can you shut that off for me? All right, so I've installed a hand vacuum pump now and we're gonna address the EGR valve itself. And uh, two things we wanna do for this step is, one, when you pump it up, is it should hold. And as I pump up this valve, you see that we got a slight drop on our gauge. And I'm not worried about that because of the amount of vacuum that's actually supplied to this EGR. Um, you know, really only a few pounds or only a few inches of mercury it takes to open it. So it's, that's holding good enough for me. I'm okay with that. 
release it. And what we wanna do now is listen to the valve itself. So I'm gonna take the camera over to the valve and see if you can hear it, but I can actually hear the valve opening and closing. And I'll, maybe you can hear it from here. I'll try it a couple times. I'll move the camera closer, see if we can pick it up. Okay, I'm closer to the EGR valve. We'll see if we can pick this sound up on the camera. Go ahead, pump it up. Release it. Keep doing it. Okay, so what that sound means that we hear is this EGR valve is opening and that confirms what we have which is a plugged up passage. All right, this last test is for all you naysayers out there on what I'm doing. And I uh, still have the hand vacuum pump connected to the EGR. I'm gonna pump it up and we're gonna, gonna take a listen to the engine, see if it gets rough. Watch the DPFE voltage. And I got plenty of vacuum. The valve is definitely open based on the sound of it opening. DPFE voltage never changed. Release it. DPFE voltage never changed. Absolutely a plugged up intake passage. All right, so let's review. For you do-it-yourselfers out there, you're working at home. You don't have a scan tool that'll give you data stream. So you need to access the DPFE voltage, signal voltage on the sensor. You have to watch my other video for that on EGR flow diagnosis on a Ford. Just T-pin the signal wire, voltmeter set on a 12 volt scale, signal range under a volt. When you open the EGR, you wanna see that voltage rise. <clears throat> Common problem, the DPFE is going bad. But truly in this case, we're not really worried about the DPFE because when we force the EGR valve to open, the engine doesn't get rough at all. It does not change at all. So your focus would then go away from the DPFE and toward the valve itself or a plugged up passage. And so when you do this test and you're putting your finger over the hole for the vent and nothing's changing, the next thing you'd want to do is come down to the valve and unplug the vacuum hose on the EGR and while you're putting your finger over top of this hole, you want to feel for vacuum at the EGR valve. If you feel for vacuum at the valve and it is there, you're done. Don't replace the valve. Don't replace the EVR. Don't replace the DPFE. You have a plugged up passage. Now, I guess you could, you could have a torn diaphragm in the EGR valve. However, out of the all the flow tests that I've done on Fords, I've probably done hundreds of plugged passages and maybe two or three valves with torn diaphragm. So it is a possibility that you have a torn diaphragm with a valve. And truly, the only way to know is a hand vacuum pump or you'd have to pull the valve off and do some inspection with the valve off. But the hand vacuum pump test, pump it up and listen for the valve to open and close. I like that test, that's good enough. All right, so the last part would be where does this thing plug up? Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you that on this vehicle. Customer doesn't wanna do it. He's just gonna drive the car. I need it for a day or so. This is actually at school here. It's a student's car and uh, you know he needs it for back and forth to work. So I can't show you how to clean this one. I'd like to, I apologize for that. But I'm gonna at least show you where to go to clean this passage. Right, kind of tough to show you guys this shot. I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm off my tripod, so I'm a little shaky here. I apologize, but here's your throttle body right here. And you have this extension piece that goes onto the intake manifold. Where these plug up is where this tube bolts to the intake. So if you look down close, it's kind of, again, tough to show you because I got hoses in my way, but that would be one of the bolts that hold the thing on right where my middle finger is pointing, that bolt right there. And so this metal tube, this kind of elbow, where this is going to plug up is here's your EGR and it runs a passage that way and it plugs up right around the base of this metal 
elbow air intake piece. So this whole elbow has got to come off. Once you unbolt the elbow piece, you will see exactly where the passages are plugged up. This vehicle does not need any parts. It needs the intake cleaned. That's it. EGR flow uh, problem on a Lincoln, and this is very similar to any of the other 4.6 engines with this design. That's what happens to a lot of them. And again, the DPFEs go bad a lot too, but you got to make sure you got flow, and that was an easy way to do it.